Hello, it's Willie from the Ozarks, and we're ready for our June 26th lesson in A Course in Miracles workbook for students, Lesson 177. Lesson 177, God is but love, and therefore so am I. It's a review of 163 and 164. 163 being, there is no death. The Son of God is free. There is no death. The Son of God is free. God is but love, and therefore so am I. And 164, now are we one with him who is our source. Now are we one with him who is our source. God is but love, and therefore so am I. Today was my dad, Samuel Genoa Perkins' birthday. He died back in 2007. And my dad was a very patient, gentle man who uh, I didn't realize just how, uh, how much of a man of peace he was until after he crossed over. It's amazing how we don't learn things about people until we get a little smarter. <laughs> Went his whole life before I just realized that he was such a good example of a man who didn't uh, push his own way and was able to just accept things as they are. Welcome truth exactly as it was. He seemed to have some ability just to, to understand what it, what it meant to be at peace and to practice his concept of forgiveness to keep him there. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't mean to spend a lot of time talking about my personal family. I told you yesterday was my son's birthday and I, and today's my dad's and, you know, but I do want to just let you know you're taking this journey with me. I want you to know a little bit about me. I've got uh, six uh, children that were born to me, one adopted and several stepchildren. And, and uh, I, uh, I just, I, I, you know, my family is um, one of the, the biggest recipients of my personal advancement in truth because they, they watch me become kinder and more understanding as the years roll along. Uh, fortunately, uh, my my children, Justice uh, in particular, uh, but all of them, uh, his birthday being the other day, yesterday, I just I thought you know what, all he, he's very responsible. He he gets up in the morning, he does his work. He's 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 got all kinds of things going. He's a pilot. He works in the construction company, building houses. He's very very adept at many things. Uh, Anyway, I appreciate him and all my children. All right, lesson 177. God is but love, and therefore so am I. There is no death. The Son of God is free. God is but love, and therefore so am I. Now are we one with him who is our source. God is but love, and therefore so am I. If we go back to lesson 163 and get just a little, I just want to read a couple reminders about that lesson. There is no death. The Son of God is free. Let's read the first paragraph. And what is the definition of death in Course in Miracles? Look at this definition. Death is a thought which takes on many forms, often unrecognized. It may appear as sadness, fear, anxiety, or doubt. All that is considered death. And he goes on. As anger, faithlessness, lack of trust, concern for bodies, envy, and all forms in which the wish to be as you are not may come to tempt you. All such thoughts are but reflections of the worshiping of death as Savior and as giver of release. Wow, so we don't want to be worshiping death as Savior. Next time you, you get angry, say, I didn't know I, I'm worshiping death. <laughs> You got a, definitely a false idol when you when you when you're angry. Uh, another place here he says uh, in there he says oh let's it's in paragraph eight uh, there is no death uh, death's worshippers may be afraid and yet can thoughts like these be fearful if they saw that it is only this which they believed they would be instantly released and. You will show them this today. There is no death. 
and we renounce it now in every form for their salvation and our own as well. God made not death. Whatever form it takes must therefore be illusion. This the stand we take today. And it is given us to look past death and see the life beyond. All right, so have we taken that stand? We committed to knowing that it's just an appearance and that there is a life beyond. We have eternal life now. And that now brings us up to the other review lesson for today, sandwiched in God is but love and therefore so am I. Lesson 164, now are we one with him who is our source. Now, now are we one with him who is our source. We're all one. You see one brother, you've seen all brothers. Remember we read yesterday? So in our, in, in this, this, what we, what we give to any one brother, we've given to all brothers and we've given to ourselves because we're all one. All right. What time, but now can truth be recognized? The present is the only time there is. And so today, this instant, now we come to look upon what is forever there, not in our sight, but in the eyes of Christ. He looks past time and sees eternity as represented there. He hears the sounds the senseless busy world engenders, yet he hears them faintly. For beyond them all, he hears the song of heaven and the voice of God more clear, more meaningful, more near. There is a silence into which the world cannot intrude. There is an ancient peace you carry in your heart and have not lost. There is a sense of holiness in you. The thought of sin has never touched. All this today you will remember. Faithfulness in practicing today will bring rewards so great and so completely different from all things you sought before that you will know that here your treasure is and here your rest. Now are we one with him who is our source. We will not judge today. This is all still out of lesson 164. Just a kind of a little quick mini review, just so that you get a little more substance to practice with for the day. We will not judge today. We will receive but what is given us from judgment made beyond the world. Our practicing today becomes our gift of thankfulness for our release from blindness and from misery. All that we see will but increase our joy because its holiness reflects our own. We stand forgiven in the sight of Christ with all the world forgiven in our own. We bless the world as we behold it in the light in which our Savior looks on us and offer it the freedom given us through his forgiving vision, now our own. Christ's forgiving vision, now our own. Open the curtain in your practicing by merely letting go all things you think you want. Your trifling treasures put away and leave a clean and open space within your mind where Christ can come and offer you the treasure of salvation. He has need of your most holy mind to save the world. He has need of your most holy mind to save the world. All right. So now are we one with him who is our source. God is but love and therefore so am I. There is no death. The son of God is free. God is but love and therefore so am I. Now are we one with him who is our source. God is but love and therefore so am I. And we're going to read a couple more paragraphs in the uh, first chapter. We finished the principles of miracles, but the last section is called distortion of miracle impulses. Let's read those next two paragraphs. You are involved, oh, here, before we do, let's take one last look at 
in sorting out the last part of uh, what we read yesterday, in, so, in sorting out the false from the true, the miracle proceeds along the following lines. If perfect love casts out fear, now that's a direct quote from the Bible where it says perfect love casts out fear. So now he's saying, if that's true, that perfect love casts out fear, that's out of uh, 1 John, if I remember right. So if perfect love casts out fear, and if fear exists, then there is not perfect love. Okay, that sounds to reason. But only perfect love really exists. Now this is a new continuation, but only perfect love really exists. If there is fear, it creates a state which does not exist. Now, let me change just a couple um, words in here and read it again, see if this makes it even a little clearer. Perfect love casts out fear. But if fear exists, then there must not be perfect love. But only perfect love really exists. So if there is fear, it creates a state which does not exist. Believe this and you will be free. Only God can establish this solution, and this faith is his gift. Distortion of Miracle Impulses, paragraph 102. You are involved in unconscious distortions which are producing a dense cover over miracle impulses and which make it hard for them to reach consciousness. You are involved in unconscious distortions, which are producing a dense cover over miracle impulses and which make it hard for them to reach consciousness. So from the superconscious state, we're always having this miracle-minded uh, consciousness, but we've made these distortions with our ego mind. And so it's hard for the, the, the true self to enter into this uh, experience. The nature of any interpersonal relationship is limited or defined by what you want it to do. Relating is a way of achieving an outcome. The danger of defenses lies in their propensity for holding misperceptions rigidly in place. The danger of defenses lies in their propensity for holding misperceptions rigidly in place. In other words, you think you need to defend yourself, so you've created a whole world that's contrary to what we just learned about perfect love. All actions which stem from reverse thinking are literally the behavioral expressions of those who know not what they do. <laughs> There's also another quote from the Bible. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Well, when we practice defenses, we're, 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 we're doing what he's called reverse thinking. We're, uh, uh, we're holding the danger of defenses lies in their propensity for holding misperceptions rigidly in place. So you, you, it's hard to be freed from them. Uh, a rigid orientation can be extremely reliable, even though it is upside down. In fact, the more consistently upside down it is, the more reliable it is. In other words, if the light is, if the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? In other words, if what you call light, that's another Bible verse, if what you call light is really darkness, well then the truth is, is that uh, you're, you're rigidly upside down in your thinking and yet it's hard for truth to get to you because you, you don't make uh, vacillations back and forth from truth to illusion. You stick strictly on illusion. So your, your perception seems to be consistent. Well, that's, that's, that's a, a, a problem. He talked about that in what we read yesterday uh, when he said that, um, let's see if I can find it real quick. Uh, well, I should have already had that marked for you all. Anyway, yesterday when we read... That's in 
Paragraph 94, every aspect of fear proceeds from upside-down perception. The more truly creative devote their efforts to correcting perceptual distortions. Remember, are you one of those that are truly creative and trying to correct your distortions? The neurotic devotes his to compromise. The psychotic tries to escape by establishing the certain truth of his own errors. It is most difficult to free him by ordinary means because he is more consistent in his own denial of truth. He's consistently upside down, so he appears to be right side up. <laughs> and it's hard to convince him otherwise, but he says of the miracle. But the miracle, however, makes no such distinctions. It corrects errors because they are errors. Thus, the next point to remember about miracles is the miracle makes no distinction among degrees of misperception. So, uh, so you know, there, there are no order of difficulty in miracles. And uh, paragraph 103. However, vol let's read back the last sentence of uh, one of the last two sentences. A rigid orientation can be extremely reliable even if it is upside down. In fact, the more consistently upside down it is, the more reliable it is. However, Validity is still the ultimate goal. <laughs> you, want, you want validity to be the goal, which reliability can only serve. Hostility, triumph, vengeance, self-debasement, and all kinds of expressions of lack of love are often very clearly seen in the fantasies which accompany them. But it is a profound error to imagine that because these fantasies are so frequent or occur so reliably that this implies validity. Remember that while validity implies reliability, the relationship is not reversible. You can be wholly reliable and entirely wrong. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. While a reliable instrument does measure something, what use is it unless you discover what the something is? This course, then, will concentrate on validity and let reliability fall naturally into place. <laughs> okay, well, we'll stop there for today. And uh, I guess yesterday you needed to know uh, about, um, about Crown Vetch because I had already talk to you about it a, a week or so earlier. I, I need to be watching that more. I didn't mean to, to say the same plant twice, uh, at least not so, you know, quick and the same thing. You know, if, now if it's in different stage of development and there's something new about it that I thought you might see, I, I do like to show plants in that case. But here I've got one, the bumblebees and, and honeybees were working yesterday. Um, this is wild bergamot, wild bergamot. Let's see, let you get a little closer look at it there. Um, has a lot of useful purposes that it's been used for. Its uh, Latin name, by the way, is Monarda fistulosa. And uh, an infusion uh, tea is used to treat colds. I wonder how that would help with uh, coronavirus. I'm sure it would be of an assistance, huh? Uh, I'm just going by these historical, you know, I read these things more as an educational uh, for, and, and, you know, do your own research before you take my advice on that you ought to use these things. Uh, but I, I find it incredibly interesting. Um, I expect in the years to come, these will be common uh, household uh, uses. Might take a few years, but, uh, but we're going to be tuning in more to the natural environment of the earth. Uh, tea infused, used to treat colds, catarrh, headaches, gastric dis disorders, kidney aches, fevers, and sore throat. Uh, an eye wash can be used uh, out of the tea to, to relieve sore eyes. Um, also, a poultice on the skin can uh, can soothe uh, sore sores and uh, cuts. So it you know, just makes a nice tea, though. It's been used for teas for a long time.
All right. So let's uh, take one last look at our lesson. God is but love, and therefore so am I. Be sure to do this, uh, your extended period in the morning and in the evening, and then a short reminder throughout the day, every hour. God is but love, and therefore so am I. There is no death. The Son of God is free. God is but love, and therefore so am I. Now are we one with him who is our source. God is but love, and therefore so am I.